and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Daniel Bergman and today, today I thought I would show you a pattern that has been fishing really well for me. Uh, it's more or less a junkyard dog whose originator is Mike Schmidt, uh, really yeah, one of the awesomest streamer guys in the business. Uh, he got some really nice patterns. Uh, but I've sort of modified this a little bit. It's just a little tweak. Uh, here you can see the original pattern. Uh, here you have the marabou tail. What I've done is actually exchanged the marabou tail to this uh, wiggle tail. And this has proved to fish really, really well. Uh, in the episode uh, we filmed this summer of Fly TV uh, called Brown Trout Fishing with Big Streamers. And this is an all black version. We had some really uh, sunny and tough days uh, to fish for trout. Uh, but during the nights, uh, this black uh, version of the Junkyard Dog actually worked really, really well. Um, if you want to see how you, how you do the original pattern as done by Mike, uh, you can always check out uh, Fly Fishing in the Ozarks. Uh, they got a really nice YouTube channel with a lot of good articulated streamer patterns and other patterns as well. Okay, let's get going. Uh, the wiggle tailed uh, junkyard dog. And when you tie these articulated streamers, you always start with the with the rear hook. Uh, and for this, I'm going to use a size one attitude streamer from Partridge. Really good hook sharp as hell. There we go. And when I tie these big bigger streamers I usually use a, a hundred denier Dyneema thread. Uh, this one is a Techstream uh, power thread. Okay so I attach the thread to the hook and just wind it Wind it, wind it, wind it, wind it, wind it, wind it. Uh, backwards. And then I go forwards one time. Uh, just to make sure, since this thread is sort of slippery, it can easily uh, slide around the hook. So I just want to make a good base of thread to build up the fly on. Um, and then we need something to attach the wiggle tail to. And for that I'm using uh, the same wire as I'm going to use for the actual articulation of this fly. I'm using a 20 pound uh, partridge wire, coated, just really, really nice one. Uh, so for this I'm using a articulation bead in, in uh, red and black. Uh, the color is called uh, Cajun Craw. It sort of harmonizes with the rest of the fly. And I take this little stump of wire and I thread it through the bead. And try to keep a, a little loop in the back that's like uh, half a centimeter or something. Put it on the hook shank. Try to make the, the loop stand up. You want to have this wire like a natural extension of the of the hook shank. It's not the entire world if it's not 100% straight. Not this time at least. And then I just tie it down uh, along the hook shank. You will have no stress on this this wire actually at all since you don't have a you don't have a hook on the on the tail. Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, but anyway, I want to secure it with with some some zap glue just to be on the safe side. Okay. Uh, for the body on this fly, I'm using a, a uh, long haired nail. Uh, this is a this one in our. Uh, range of products. This one is called uh, Long Hair Holographic Chenille and this is the red and black which is a really nice color. Then I tie down 
sort of the on the underside of the hook and wind the the bobbin all the way almost to the hook eye. When I wind this forward I want to sort of double everything backwards all the time not to uh, trap too many fibers. It's better to take sort of a long long strip of this chenille so you got a lot of lot of material to hold on to when winding. So for every turn I do touching the other one I'm stroking the material backwards. Okay. Uh, I leave like two millimeters to the front of the hook and I tie off the material. Trim off the excess. Okay, I'm um, gonna have a wing on this one uh, just to balance it up a little bit. Uh, sort of keeps the the hook bend facing downwards and the upside facing upwards. And I'll take a, a small clump of Arctic Fox hair in black. Uh, not too much, but not too little as well. <laughs> We got an awesome word in Swedish called lagom. It mean, means not too much and not too little. I sort of want this to be as long as the the hook I, uh, the complete hook is actually. And then I change hand so it's facing forward everything. Make a loose turn. Get it in place. Make a couple of tight wraps sort of spread it around the hook chunk to get a wide wing and then I trim off some of the excess. This is really not necessary but uh, looks a bit better. Okay, then I fold ev everything backwards like when you're tying sort of a temple dog uh, salmon fly wing. Tie it down and you get this really nice wide profile. Uh, makes a really nice um, sort of buoyancy on the top. And then I'm going to to have some marabou, and I use this uh, blood quill marabou from from Wapsi, uh, marabou strung. I take a plume, that is yeah, same thing here, not too big, not too small. But I want as even tips as possible on this one. Then I just turn the wires around and I'm going to make this yeah, maybe just a little shorter than the wing. Pinch and loop and pinch and loop again. Then everything is tied securely down on the other side. Then you just trim off the excess without cutting the thread. Hopefully, yeah. something like that. Okay, excellent. Trim off some some more stuff if you want to. Uh, now, if you want a blackhead, if you care about that stuff, uh, you can always take like a uh, black marker and, and uh, color the thread, but I don't care, because I know that the trout don't. I put some super glue on the thread, and be careful with this, and I do a couple of turns in the front, and a little whip finish, a couple of turns trim off the, the thread. Well, that's about it for the back part of the fly. We can put that away for now. And if you're going to tie like a bunch of these you always do this first. Uh, you can if you're going to tie five you do five tails. Um, 
so you get some momentum. Okay, for the front uh, part of the fly I'm using a Attitude Extra, which is a bit heavier uh, uh, hook here in size 2 zero. That is more or less a ground rule uh, when it comes to this articulated stuff. Uh, that you're using a, a bigger hook for the front part of the fly than the back fly. Then you won't have the momentum when you twitch it hard, uh, the back of the hook won't like go around and uh, tangle with the front hook. Okay, attach it to the vise and put on a solid base of thread. Everything's so dry now during winter that everything sticks to your fingers. It's a pain in the ass. Um, I go back and forward a couple of times. There we go. Uh, so now we're going to attach the rear part of the fly to the front part of the fly. Then I take a like a seven or seven or eight centimeter uh, of this uh, twenty pound wire again. Thread it through the hook eye of the rear hook. Fold it uh, double. Try to make sure the ends are even, just to make it easier. There we go. And then I take a couple, two, uh, Cajun Craw articulation beads and thread them on. And this is going to be like the distance between the, the frontal and the rear hook. And also an uh, important factor to stop it from tangling. And then I place the whole package on top of the frontal hook and try to get the loop of the wire standing up. Tie it down with a few loose turns and adjust it. So I have it on the upper part of the frontal hook. And I just tie it down the loose ends. I stop maybe like a centimeter from the from the hook eye. And I take the ends. I know uh, many of the Americans American guys don't do this, but I'm sort of superstitious. I fold it back and tie it down. I don't want to leave anything to coincidence. It takes a bit longer, but it makes me more confident. Then I tie it down all the way backwards. Okay, so now you can see uh, that this uh, loop is sort of a natural extension of the hook. Just to cover it up a little bit, I'm using one more fox fur wing. And take a decent clump. Uh, take away some of the shortest hair. And I place it on top. This time I won't fold it. Uh, place it on top so it's sort of uh, facing half the way of the wing in the back. Loose thread turn. And then I just tie down the Excess. Something like that. It's looking good. Uh, one more of these uh, marabou. Oh, that's decent. That was a whole bunch. I take this clump uh, in the length I think I want I sort of put it over the hook bend and through to the underside take it with my left hand and tie it down with a pinch and loop and then I wind it forward uh, ah come on sort of on the underside of the hook shank and cut it off maybe 
half a centimeter uh, before the hook eye. And then I tie everything down there. Okay, so that should be enough. I'm going to take a piece of this um, chenille again. Quite a long bit. Quite a cheap material, so it's better to take more than too little. Tie down uh, to the hook and go forward with the thread. Almost, yeah, you can stop where the marabou stops. And then it's the same procedure as in the rear hook. Wind and stroke backwards. Wind and stroke backwards. What I like with many of these uh, articulated flies is that everything is ba based on uh, repetition. Uh, usually many flies are more or less a repetition of what you have done on the on the back hook. So done and I tie it off. Have like a maybe half a centimeter between the material and the and the hook eye now. That is usually enough. And then I take one more piece of fox hair. Not too much and not too little. Cut it off. Take away some of the shorter stuff. It should be enough. I'm going to tie it in the same way as I tied in the hair clump in the back. Place it on top, uh, facing forward, and tie it down and trim off some of the excess. You can leave a little to help lift the wing and, and get some volume. Okay, there we go. I fold it backwards in a loose turn. Make sure it spreads out nicely over the top of the fly. Put some hard turns. That's nice. That's what I want. And then we go for some more marabou. Try to find a plume that's nice and even. And I want it a bit thicker than the the plumes in the back. Uh, the length should be like uh, the whole whole frontal hook. Put it on the underside. Tie it in. And trim off the excess. There we go. Okay, just before we do the head, I want to lock everything in place with a couple of turns of thread, glue on thread. There we go. Okay. Uh, the head I'm building uh, with the uh, Senior Laser Dub, which is a great dubbing for many things. It's actually good to, it's good for nymph patterns as well, but uh, I think the popularity of it sort of comes from, from uh, the possibility to build up some bulky and nice heads. And I take a, a sort of a big clump of this stuff and I pull it apart a couple of times just to get all the uh, all more or less all the fibers aligned facing the same direction and then i place this 50/50 uh, facing backwards and forwards on top of the hook shank try to keep it the first clump as so as close to the wing as possible then i make a loose turn one more loose turn. Uh, make sure it's spread on both both sides of the hook. 
Then I do this again. Take sort of a similar clump, maybe a little bit smaller, uh, not to get too much buoyancy on the upside of the fly. And then I turn my wise. And I do the same thing on the other side in the same uh, thread wraps that I've done before. Two turns, uh, make sure it divides nicely on both sides. Just pull it if you have to. And I make a, I put it, pull it a bit hard just to set it in place. And then I fold the top um, backwards and I go through with the thread between the upper clump and the clump down. Okay, that's the first section. I want one more, uh, just to make a sort of a big head. Take a good clump. Oh, maybe that, not that big. Same procedure as before. Get all the fibers aligned. Um, tight down on the middle. There we go. Turn your wise. Okay. That's about it. Tight down in the same way, just on the other side. And I turn my hook. Look so everything is nicely divide, divided on top and on the sides and everything and I go through with the thread while folding the stuff backwards okay that's more or less the tying part make a few turns in front of everything and I secure it with some glue on the thread. A couple of loose turns and if you want you can do a whip finish but it's good enough to do a couple of half hitches. There we go, cut off the thread. That's the tying part. Uh, to even out this head a little bit and make it a little bit less bulky I take like this sort of brushy thing that you can comb your hamster or your beard maybe or your cat uh, then you some fibers come loose and everything aligns quite nicely there we go okay now for the eyes and for this I'm using a really nice glue, that's called Tear Mender, uh, which is more or less a latex glue. Uh, and it doesn't become hard like super glue. You need to shake this quite, quite well uh, before using it. And this is quite runny stuff, uh, so I don't want to put it straight there. You can actually place it in a in a smaller bottle with a more exact uh, uh, dosation, but I couldn't find mine. Uh, so I'm just putting a clump there. Then I take these uh, nine millimeters uh, orange eyes with a white pupil on a dubbing needle. And since it's uh, sticky on the back side, it actually stays on the on the needle. Then I take a different needle and sort of apply this this runny glue to this eye. And even though it, this stuff is so runny, uh, it actually I think it works better. The the eyes stay on longer uh, than with. Uh, yeah, like sap gel or something like that. You can use that, but when gluing something to this uh, 
laser dub or similar I think this actually works better ah, come on there we go if you get some glue on the dubbing it doesn't matter you can always take away that later when it's dry okay same procedure on the other side be quite generous turns out better then I'm going to try to place that on the on the same place on the opposite side of the fly okay that's good nice I take this one of these uh, hair clips and place it on top of the eyes let it dry like that okay uh, now it should be more or less dry I take away the hair clip um, and take the hook from the vise I'm gonna do a sort of a wedge here make it a bit more pointy I go in with my scissors and trim it down a little bit just around the eyes uh, same thing on the above the eyes and this actually gives the fly more like a cutting side to side action okay so the tying part is done uh, now we just need a wiggle tail and I usually carry this stuff around a whole bunch of colors and sizes uh, the one that work, worked best uh, this summer was actually the holographic black before I use it use the tail I actually normally stretch it a little bit to get a more lively motion to it then I just thread it through this little loop in the back and make sure it slides in there there we go and we're done so the wiggle tailed junkyard dog really good uh, sort of medium sized uh, trout streamer well in Sweden it would be called a big streamer but really has worked well for me with the tail so, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. Go out and play.